Hi, I'm David Dolman, the design engineer at Alpha Data, and I'm going to show you this um, demo on uh, volume rendering uh, across a set of FPGA cards. So down here we have a set of uh, KU16 based FPGA cards, um, and on the screen you can see the output of the rendering. Um, so we have a volumetric data set of um, a scan of a, a buckyball, and for each pixel on the screen, we're casting a ray uh, into the data set and modifying the color of the ray uh, based on the, the value in the data set. And that ray will continue iterating through the data set until it either uh, hits a fully opaque pixel or it exits the rear of the data set. Um, so at the start of uh, running the application, the data set is uploaded to each of the, the free FPGA cards. Um, and then the, um, the work group of rendering the whole frame is divided up between the three cards. So each card is rendering a third of the, the frame that you see. Um, on completion of the rendering of a frame, a DMA operation is used to transfer the data from each of the FPGA cards uh, straight into texture memory, uh, where it then updates uh, the display. Um, we can see on the screen um, the, the frame rate um, and the number of joules per frame. Uh, and the reason that you might want to do this type of application on an FPGA card is the in not just the increase in performance, but the increase in power efficiency. So here we can see on the FPGA cards, we're only using about two joules for each frame. And I'm just gonna drop it down to running on a single x86 core uh, on an i5 processor. And you can see immediately the frame rate has plummeted. And shortly we'll see a calculation of the number of joules per frame that's required to perform the rendering. Uh, so 52. So you can see there uh, we have a power, uh, power efficiency increase that's an order of 10 better uh, than we had. Uh, sorry. <laughs> an order of 10 better uh, running on an FPGA card than running on an x86 processor. Great. Thank you very much. No problem.